Welcome, Lele. Thank you so much. Welcome to my office. Denmark uh, go wa joso keto ego ka hanushi mashou ka. Ego no hou ga ii desu. Hai, onegashimasu. So, uh, we'll speak in English today, even though, uh, even though Lele uh, is quite good at Danish. Thank you so much. So, uh, Lele uh, came to SDU today to give a, a talk at the institute, which you'll do later. Yes, uh, yes but uh, but you're actually doing your your work at St Andrews University of St Andrews in, yes, in, yes. in Scotland. In Scotland, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I got some good friends out there. I hope you're you're watching also. Mm -hmm. um, recently, I uh, I did a video on one of your papers. Yes, one yes, of your recent you so papers because you just did three papers actually. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you did the the one on rising and Nordstrom solutions in conformal gravity, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, dionically charged black yes, holes yes. in wild conformal gravity. It it's a quite a, a difficult paper, but a really interesting one. Thank you so much. So, um, and you're going to talk about some of this work today at SDU, but yes. also here with us. So, what's it all about? What's what's the topic uh, that you're working on? What what is uh, conformal gravity? Yeah, so uh, conformal gravity is one of the um, topics that I work on with um, my supervisors at university. Um, it's an alternative theory of gravity to general relativity, um, and it uses an additional symmetry principle, which is called conformal invariance, to um, and that essentially. From that principle alone, you can uh, build the, the field equations. And it actually serves as an alternative theory to general relativity because it tries to fix many of the, the problems that general relativity has on, on, for example, galactic and cosmological scales as well as the more quantum scales. Yeah. So, I mean, gravity in the way that Einstein described it is, is, is difficult enough for most of us. But I mean, within this kind of theoretical frame, it's, it, it can become even more <laughs> difficult, at least for me, to understand. So as you say, there are some symmetries. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So um, the, the main difference, just maybe perhaps the only difference between general relativity and conformal gravity is in the fact that while general relativity has these invariances called uh, Lorentz coordinate and diffeomorphism, um, conformal gravity has the additional constraint that the laws of physics must be conformally invariant as well. Well, essentially, it's a, it's a transformation that preserves angles and shapes, but not necessarily distances. The, um, the physics stays the same, which is, <clears throat> which is actually a, a, a symmetry that, for example, Maxwell's equations have. And it's the same symmetry that the strong force has from yeah. the standard model of particle physics. Yeah. Um, and what's really interesting, actually, is that while those standard model forces are conformally invariant and they are second order theories. Mm. It is precisely that conformal invariance makes, which makes gravity fourth order. And um, that gives rise to additional degrees of freedom, as you, as you said, and that leads to some rather interesting effects. Yeah, oh, I like that you, you, you point out the Maxwell's uh, equations because in, in, when doing magnetohydrodynamics in stars, like, like I've done a lot, uh, the Maxwell equations are really the basic uh, laws of nature that, yeah. that we have in there. So let me get it right. So in general relativity, I mean, this is the, 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 the framework that most people work within. But this kind of uh, symmetry, these kind of symmetries actually uh, restricts uh, the, the theory uh, more because you have the, the restriction of symmetry. Uh, but at the same time, having the higher order derivatives gives potentially more solutions or more details uh, so one of the things that I, I, I understood about, for instance, black holes and compact objects is that you can have more different types of black holes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Even though you restricted the theory. Yes, yes, which is, which is super cool. Um, for example, because of the way the, the field of equations are set up in conformal gravity, you can't put, put in arbitrary types of matter sources. So for example, you can't put in a dark energy term by a cosmological constant which you put in by hand in general relativity, right? Yeah. But in conformal gravity, you can't do that. Um, you can't arbitrarily put types, different types of matter in. It has to satisfy this additional um, field equation um, restraint, which is actually um, the fact that um, the energy momentum tensor um, has to be traceless. So if you add the diagonals, it goes to zero. Um, so for example, you can't put in 
the cosmological constant, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but then, even though the theory is more restrictive in that sense, in that it's, it restricts the types of matter sources, it actually gives rise to some rather interesting degrees of freedom from which you can actually, for example, obtain a cosmological constant-like term without having to put it in by hand. All right. So in that way, it's actually more true to Einstein's original thought, where he, he didn't have the, the, the term yeah. in there. Yeah. But it just arises naturally. It arises very, naturally. Yeah. Ah, OK. But, but it means also that since you can, have, you can have more different types of species of black holes or compact objects, objects you can also have more dif uh, different horizons. Normally, we talk about black hole has a, a, an event horizon, or if it's rotating, you have a, you have a, a different type of horizon. But, but in, in compact objects in this theory, can actually have more, more event horizons than just one. Yes, yes. Um, so that's one of the, the major results that um, myself, along with um, Miguel Yulo and, and Keith Horn from St. Andrews and, well, Nottingham and St. Andrews, effectively, we found in this new paper on um, Ryzen and Nordstrom black holes, so charged black holes in conformal gravity, where there exists a certain configuration where you get um, an event horizon that's at the very, the, the outmost, outermost door, that's the outermost border. Um, that's very much like a standard black hole where mm -hmm. if you cross it, you, you fall into the central singularity. And then for, for example, rotating or charged black holes in general relativity, you have this additional Cauchy horizon, yeah. which inside which time ticks like time and space acts like space. So you yeah. don't have to fall into the central singularity anymore. Uh -huh. so, so that's like a normal rotating or charged black hole in general relativity. Yeah. But in this new paper, we found that there's a configuration you can get where there is another horizon, another event horizon inside this Cauchy horizon, um, which you don't get in general relativity as, as far as we're, we're concerned, yeah. um, which is a, a pretty cool result, um, I think. All right. I, I think that a lot of people, of course, they have heard about event horizons and imagine what it would be like to fall into a, a black hole with just one event horizon, then you get you know, pulled out like spaghetti due to the yeah. gravitational shear and all these things. Mm. But would it be different falling into one of your black holes? I, I suppose it would be relatively quite similar. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I would imagine it, it would be relatively similar. But I, I had this co conversation with um, my co-authors. But um, you say that inside the second horizon, so the Cauchy horizon, time takes normally. Mm -hmm. um, but then... Inside, if, if you have another event horizon in, inside of that, then it's rather doubtful whether the second horizon can really be called Cauchy to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I, I think I, I would imagine that at least in the first event horizon, you would, you would get like spaghettified. So it's, think, it's yeah. not completely wrong to say that it's more complicated. I mean, you yeah, will absolutely. experience something more complicated also because these black holes are charged. Yes, yes. Uh, both electrically and magnetically. Yes, yeah, yeah. So that's we formulated the um, the solution, I suppose, dionically. So both electrically and magnetically, because that's what the um, original solution does. So um, obviously there are no magnetic monopoles in, and and that's the standard. No, nope, we don't believe in those. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, we decided to just, or, or rather, the original paper that derives these solutions in ninety one. Um, they just don't make any assumptions about that and just calculate the, the, the metric. So we said, OK, we can, we can remove magnetic charge if we want, and yeah. we can also remove electric charge if we, if we want, but let's formulate it in the most general case following that um, so that we can get a, you know. All right. Uh, so you didn't make it easy, I mean. <laughs> no, well, no, no, yeah. you, no, no, because I mean, it, 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 you, it, it, you kept it to the general principles yes, yes, exactly, where yeah. all, uh, yeah, all possible uh, scenarios with the uh, various charges of uh, various kinds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. precisely. What, what are your plans to do now when you solve the general case? Then what, what's the plan? <laughs> well, um, the plan for my, my next steps in research. Yeah, yeah. Um, so currently, I'm, I'm kind of taking a back seat from conformal gravity. Yeah. Um, but I'm still continuing research um, 
in, in uh, albeit in a in a different area. Yeah. So, aside from conformal gravity, I also do some work on active galactic nuclei. Ah. So so AGN. Yeah. Um, AGN are the 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 engines of galaxy evolution that find at the the center of galaxies, and um, there's a supermassive black hole in the center, or so we believe, and yeah. that the it's it's accretion, it's collection. Well, the way it collects mass is said to power galaxy evolution, right? Yeah. Um, and so I'm doing some work on that, um, some observational stuff, yeah. and then on a more theoretical front, I aside from conformal gravity, I I do I do some work on. I've started to do some work recently on what I what are called um, Einstein Dirac solitons or uh, the particle like solutions of um, um, the coupled Einstein and Dirac equations. Ah, okay. Um, and they serve as semi classical approximations to quantum gravity. So it's quantum gravity, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so um, I, I think we're, I'm, I'm knee deep in that right now. <laughs> um, but there's also talk of applying now, I suppose. Conformal gravity, yeah. Dirac, uh, Dirac solitons. So we um, describe Dirac fermions in conformal gravity as opposed to general. So it all well. comes together. But yeah, I mean, yeah. even ju just just talking about the AGNs, I mean, they are powerhouses of galaxies. You yeah, say, yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, presumably a very compact object uh, at the center. Yes. So back again to black holes. Yeah. But also, I mean, they are in galaxies. Yeah, uh, and uh, galaxies have these weird rotation curves yes, that people yes. interpret uh, generally as a as a evidence for dark matter. But in conformal gravity, you don't really need dark you matter, need do dark you? Matter, yeah. Because there's this linear term yeah. that arises from the symmetry and the fourth yeah. order derivatives yeah. Yeah. that that makes it, uh, I mean, unnecessary, not necessary to have dark matter in. In galaxies, exactly. That's exactly right. Yes, yes. Um, so, I mean, talking yeah. about maybe evidence for some of these things. Also, the, you have theories, but often people want to back it up with the observational evidence. So, um, how would you test uh, conformal gravity? I mean, one way I, I presume would be to look at the rotation curves in galaxies yeah. and and see if you can make them match uh, theoretically. Yes. Uh, but are there any other ways to test conformal gravity? Yeah, so uh, there have been quite a few astrophysical tests of conformal gravity. Um, the main one has been rotation curves, because um, that's very much of interest, obviously. Yeah. Um, and conformal gravity, to, to talk a bit, a bit about that, conformal gravity can make simultaneous fits of rotation curves of, of up to 138 different galaxies. Oh. Which is quite substantial, I think, yeah. um, and it's suspected that it may do even better for dwarf galaxies yeah. because we have this linear term in the metric in conformal gravity, which is rising, yeah. and rotation curves in dwarf galaxies are not flat like DVD discs, but they're yeah. they're rising. So yeah. we get you the the velocities get higher, I believe, as as the the more you go out yeah. uh, outwards in radius. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, so there's work on rotation curves. It's been tested with cosmology as well, mm -hmm. um, and there has been some work on the anomalous um, behaviors of galaxy clusters. Mm -hmm. um, there's been some work on that, and yeah, I think overall it's it's a very attractive theory, obviously, because you don't have to invoke the dark sector in order to make things work. But overall, it seems that. Lambda CDM, which is a standard mm. dark energy, dark matter paradigm, does work a bit better than than standard conformal gravity. So we're we're still testing it. We're still still trying out different things. But um, yeah, uh, e even having the lambda that you don't need uh, really to put in exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that's yeah. that's very attractive. Yeah. I think the other ways might be to uh, to look at the details of orbits of of you know uh, stars, for instance, that yes. are close to uh, Compact objects mm -hmm. to to see the details of the orbits and maybe also even disks, uh, Christian disks. Uh, oh yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yes. One thing in conformal gravity that has not yet been solved yeah. is actually the Big Bang nucleosynthesis problem. Ah. Uh -huh. um, where how to make the the elements? Yes, yes. Basically, yeah. Um, and it can make very much of of one, but but not the other. So there's a uh -huh. a primordial either lithium or deuterium problem that. Yeah, but you know, in, in science, we always like problems that are not solved yet because then we have something to do for yes. work. 
Right. So, uh, but but one of the things of I think that are also you know in your line is that maybe you want to do a PhD. Yes, yes. Because Lele actually didn't do his PhD. All this is based on your masters. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So pretty impressive, I think. Thank you, thank you. So you're looking to do a, a PhD, and it in a it need not be in conformal gravity. I understand, but maybe yeah. AGNs, maybe these other kinds of uh, quantum gravity yes, models. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the wish, yeah. Yeah, that's but I, I mean, good luck with that. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. So it was nice, nice having you here. Yeah, thank uh, you so much I look for forward to uh, to your colloquium uh, in about an hour or so, uh -huh. and I, I hope that people watching here enjoyed uh, this and are interested in what Lele is up to in the future. So nice having you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and bye bye. <laughs>